Welcome everybody. Welcome to New Hunter Church of Christ. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. I feel like saying good morning, Vietnam. No, but really, we've been doing a series, series, folks. We've been doing a series, uh, you know, based on Romans. And uh, it's Romans chapter 2, verses 17 through 24. I said 18, but it's really 17. Let's read that together and we'll go to the Lord in prayer. This is where the Jews, but also I'm going to apply Jews and Gentiles were condemned by the law. Meaning the law, you can take this two ways. The law of the world by their dietary laws, which are no longer in effect now. Or you can take it the way that they're, they're being condemned by God's law. Because law can be referred to as two ways in the Bible. It's God's law or the law of man. So the one we want to follow is after God's law. So listen to what the scripture says here this morning. Chapter 2 in Romans, turn there, chapter uh, 17, verse 17 through 24. It says, But if you call yourselves a Jew or a Gentile and rely on just the law of man, and then you go around and boast in God's name, okay, and then also it says, and then you also know his very divine will and nature and approve of all the things that are superior because you... Okay, not somebody else, but you or me. You can know, put anybody's name there. Have been instructed by the law. This is the Bible here, not the worldly law. The law of God, the nature of natural order of things. And are what? Have been what? Confident that you yourselves are a guide of the blind. Like someone who is new to the faith, they're blind. They don't know a lot about it, or they're physically blind. Maybe you're guiding them around to get around, or maybe you're helping them to understand things. So that can be taken so many different ways. But you are like a light to those who are in the, in the tunnel of darkness, you know, who have side vision, and all they see is straight ahead. They don't see what's going around the corner. That's why they fall over cliffs and go to hell. See, that's why you've got to make sure they see what's in front of them. They're blindsided, all right? So it says, and also you may be an instructor, of the foolish men and women. Or you may be foolish yourself because you have not really dealt with these issues. Listen as the text continues. You want to be a teacher. You know, you want to teach people. And yet you're immature as a teacher yourself. Having the very embodiment of all the knowledge of what you're supposed to do as a brother and sister in Christ and of the truth of the divine nature of God of the law. So he's saying divine nature there of God's law again. There, that's what it's talking about. Therefore, see, there's a therefore condition here. It says, the one who teaches someone else, do you not teach yourself? You hear that? So what you teaching, are you doing that too? Are you still sinning? That's what he's saying here. Are you still sinning? Are you still teaching things against things that you're talking about, but yet you're guilty of doing the same thing? That's what God is calling people out and telling us today. Don't be hypocrites. If you're going to teach something, teach it right. Keep it hot. Okay? Make sure you're in the right standing yourself. Okay? So it's also, are you one who preaches about not to steal, but yet you still steal from people and steal from the offering plates? Are you still stealing from your brother or your sister because you covered what they have? Well, we're not supposed to be. We're commanded not to do that. Okay? It says, do you steal? That's the question. It says, number 22. It says, one who says not to what? Commit adultery, and you're committing adultery yourself, sleeping around with girls and having girls over, having sex or relations. Are you doing that yourself, and yet you're telling people not to do it, and you're doing it yourself? How hypocrite are you? See, that's the thing. We can't, you can't teach something if you're doing it yourself. Okay, that's what it's saying here. It says, do you commit adultery too? That's what we're talking about here. That's what the scripture, that's what the scripture's telling us here. Is what he's saying there. It says one who a, a whores, you know, a whores who speaks against idols like false gods, TVs, anything, cell phones, iPads. You spend more time on that than you do with God. If you're not reading the Bible and you're doing a lot of things on that, then that becomes your idol. Anything that you spend more time than what you give to God is an idol. And that's by definition, and that could be that's bad. You give God the glory, not anything else. It says, do you rob temples? This is what we're talking about. Stealing from the plate, the tithing and all, taking things out of there. It says, who boasts in the law? You talk about the law, but yet you don't follow the law yourself. It says, by transgression of the law, you dishonor God. 
See, when you don't do obey the law yourself, you disobey God's translation. Just trans, just tell you what it really says there. It says for just as it is written here, as it's been identified, what we just read above it says the name of God is being blasphemed among all the Gentiles as well as Jews alike who don't follow the law and keep or obey it of the law of God because of you. This is what God says. And it's all because of you. All right, let's go to Lord in prayer. That was Romans 2, Romans 2, uh, verses 17 through 24. Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day and help us, Lord, to get through this sermon, help it to help people to come closer to God, to have a newer and real understanding, a true understanding that this is not something that we do when we feel good or when it's convenient, but when we follow God, it's a lifestyle that changes our life for the rest of our lives. And it goes onward from there. Lord, help us to be blessed and help us to be honored by it so that we can live and be totally close and free to you. And please, I want to lift up the neighbor downstairs with her foot, help her, Lord, to get the help that she needs and gets the corrective surgery and things that she needs so her foot can heal right and set right. And please help her, Lord, to have a good attitude and be able to go through the stuff and everything will be good and work out for her good. And that we she want to keep going back to those doctors, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for everything that you do. In Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray, amen. So as we're saying in the introductions, as we're talking here, we're talking about changing to God's standard. That's the title of this sermon this morning. After we just read Romans 2, verses 17 through 24. Changing to God's standard and getting rid of the worldly standard. That's the title. But I'm just going to say changing to God's standard. Okay, and that's what it'll say on YouTube. And it'll have the Roman, have Rome 2, verses 17 through 24. That's the text. So that's what you'll see as the title. It says, as I say, don't do as I do. You ever hear people say that? It's like they live by a different set of rules than all of us. You ever notice that? They say, well, I can do these things, but you can't. Like they have different rules, right? No, all the rules apply to all of us. But have you heard that saying, though? Now, I wonder, does, I wonder, does that ever work or has that ever worked? The answer is no. I mean, I, I don't know anybody that lives by the philosophy where it works because they still got to face the same judgment as I do in the end. And they still got to face, you know, you know, being separated from God, being cut off, thrown into hell, or going from paradise to heaven, depending on what side they're living on. But we all got to face that impending day of judgment. As noted in Romans 2, verses 17 to 24, what we just read. Now, today, now, as we look at today's picture from Romans, it, we, we need to focus on this, a man. It's basically, if we look at today in modern day, in Romans 2, it opens up with the man who's sitting in a lawn chair. And he's just out of breath because he just only walked about 50 yards. Is You know, it's a 50-yard walk from his car to his lawn chair. He weighs, he's about 5 foot 8 inches tall, 302 pounds, with more stomach hanging out of his front part of his t-shirt than what's in it. I mean, he's really over beast and overweight. Says he has a 5 pound tin of potato chips on one side of the chair and a 6 pack of soda or bud heavy beer on the other. It sounds like a typical, a typical male that's outside of Christ or even a Christian who drinks soda. Watching the football game. Says, and he's beginning his lecture. Basically, he's going to be giving that lecture to someone about clean living and conditioning. But yet he's not living in self control, but yet he's, but listen, but yet he's not uh, living that life himself by the way his obesity and the way he's living with the way he's taking care of himself. That sounds funny, but there's a lot of people like that, but it goes on here. He's a football coach. And of course, around him are his very team of world haters or world beaters. Okay? He is establishing the very training rules and also announcing the very penalties for breaking them. You know, those rules. Says, What do you think about this? says, will it certainly work? Well, the answer to that one, you know, certainly is no. Now look at Chaucer's Canaanberry Tales, 
has it introduces us to a heroic poor person of a man it says first he wrought and then secondly afterward he taught okay that's just right that's exactly what he did in that book as we read as we draw from those Canterbury tales it says here is a dangerous tendency that must be recognized and addressed here, coming from Romans 2, verses 17 through 21a. Now, point A is, some people rely on their associations, or associates, other people, or things, you know, or their self-interest, their self-interest or self-image is more important than doing the will for Christ. You know, it's like, or the worry about what other people may say. It's based on, you know, possessing, the very law, rather than on obeying the law of Scripture. Or it's basically on rituals instead of the faith, a living faith with Jesus Christ. Or it's based on heritage instead of based on continual commitment for Him and His cause. That's what it's supposed to be based on. Now some are also even eager to teach others. You know, to have others sit up and listen to what they have to say. Now, Paul also wrote and also challenges us as well as the people back then who he wrote to about the enthusiasm to reform others. Meaning he's also reminding all of us today that our main job and certainly our first and foremost job is to have undergone reformation ourselves. Meaning, in order for us to be an example for other people, like we touch on in the scriptural reading, that we must change our actions and our attitudes ourselves. We can't be out here preaching the word of God when we're not living right ourselves. Okay? Let's go on here a little bit. It says, number two. It says, here is a popular practice today that must be changed and challenged. That's found in Romans chapter 2, verse 21b, the second part, to 21, to 24. The end of what we read. Now, thieves sometimes have lectured on and against crime and stealing. Now, do I give any employer... Do I give my employer, or any employer, honesty? Or am I honest with my employer is what it should say there? Um, do I do valuable work for what I get paid all the time? Do I keep my books accurately? Do I settle my debts? And do I handle my very taxes with the IRS with care and with honesty? Come on. Adulterers who are not in control of their own eyes and their lust and their desires and their minds have railed against adultery, but yet they're still living in adultery. Now, idolatry is not adultery, but that's like what we talk about. Anything that you that you put more time into other than God is considered idolatry. Now, many people, they will lavish their care on themselves and speak about hating idols, but yet they still do it themselves. Now, in conclusion this afternoon, do you dishonor God by breaking the very law that God has established for all people? God's name has been blasphemed among the very Gentiles and Jews alike who do not follow his laws and do not follow his ways. It says, because of all of you, it says, who are repulsive, preacherments, who followed by personal contradictions, it says, make us lose credibility over time because we're not being true examples for Christ ourselves. But the real crisis comes from the very fact that this casts a very negative reflection upon the very truth of the sovereign word of God that we have handled so carelessly. And on the very Christ of Jesus, who is in heaven himself. So it basically puts a bad taste for God and sometimes can draw people away by just the way we act. Sometimes we need to really look at ourselves and check that out. It says, but this, but that, but yet his name can be honored. It says, among our very neighbors in our communities and where we live and even on the job. It says, when our teaching and our walk <coughs> march to the same beat and cadence of the drum, meaning our life is in line, our characters in check, 
And we're doing exactly what we're saying. So when we're teaching, we're not actually guilty of the things we're talking about. But yet we're teaching to encourage other people so they don't fall into the trap. And that we're living right for Christ ourselves. It says, our, willing, our, our witness to the love of Jesus Christ and the hope in their actual forgiveness that we demonstrate towards others and the abundant joy that we get from God and serving God is the fulfillment that comes through Jesus Christ, our greatest privilege and honor. And it is a grand possibility that God can meet a great human hunger and our needs with you as a translator and also someone who intercesses on our on his beha- on our prayers and even through our miracles and even things in our life he acts as our intercessor let's go to lord prayer we'll have communion dear lord thank you for this time coming together as we have our midday afternoon service a little later than new normal because computer problems we're fixed now thank god for that internet is back where it's supposed to be thank you for the charges coming off and thank you that it makes it a little easier for us Thank you for Comcast doing that. Uh, thank you for uh, the church bringing the food over. And thank you for this wonderful day. And Jesus, in your wonderful name, I pray. Amen. We'll get right back to that. i got to get this phone call, as you can hear it. So let me pause this thing. All right, we're back again. We're back again. All right, we're going to go right into communion there. Sorry for the interruption because the phone had to stop it there because we got people calling in weird times. That's the way some people are. Uh, they don't keep. They don't have the same time as most people have. Um, that was my thumb there. Whoa! I guess we got attacked by the by the alien thumbs there. Some huge thumbs coming in there. Anyway, let's prepare our minds and hearts for the Lord's supper. We come to the Lord today to give thanks and to also reflect on what he's done for us as Christian believers. As we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 11, I'm going to paraphrase it for you for time's sake. We have the communion which represents his blood who's been poured out for us for our sins. And we also have the bread which represents which is which represents his flesh which is the symbolically meaning he's present with us and not really his flesh like the Catholics will teach. Uh, but that's nasty if you were really eating flesh. This would become flesh once it enters your body. But I used to be a Catholic. It's horrible. I would not want to eat dead flesh. And I don't think any of y'all would either. But this is symbolic to represent that Jesus Christ is with us. Let's do this in remembrance of them as the disciples did over 2,000 years ago. Let's partake. Let's do it in remembrance of him. And as we say, like with the bread, we see like to the bread that Jesus Christ is the vine of life, shed his vine of life or blood on the cross as a reminder and a memorial for us to remind us that he died, he was dead, came up on the third day, to remind us that his blood has the power to remove all sins in our life and that he can restore us and that he has the power to save us and only him and him alone, if you're a Christian, can be saved only through him and by him. So let's partake this right now and think about that this morning. Let's partake. Dear Lord, thank you for this time that we had together today, Father God, that we can come out here and learn about your word and know that you truly, honestly do love us and you care about us and you came here to save those who seek who, who seek to come to him. Thank you, Lord, that your Holy Spirit comes in us after we're baptized, but not before, and that we can have a true relationship with you that can last for eternity. After this life is over, and it can go on into eternity to be with you face to face in heaven. Thank you, Lord, for all that. Jesus may pray, man. See you next week. Go out and fight the devil. Remember to subscribe down below and donate if you feel like you can. You can help us out because we do need your help. And uh, we'll talk more about Romans next week. And I love you. And please stay strong in the faith. Stay tuned. Stay connected. And stay lined in line with Christ. See you next week. Evangelist Michael DeSilvis from, from New Hunter Church of Christ in Mechanicsville, Virginia. Off of Coal Harbor Road. See you later now.